Hello, this is Bruno Pelletier Backer. Today's vlog is going to be a little different. I thought, for a change, we would do a little bit of ear training. The big word, ear training. A lot of you are asking me about that. A lot of students are asking me about ear training. Um, and I think I probably will do a little series on uh, you know, various topics related to ear training, because it, it is actually a vast and vague sometimes um, topic. So, uh, but for today, we're going to start something uh, rather simple. And uh, this is going to be directly related to us guitar players, uh, jazz guitar players. So here's the idea. The idea is that we are going to uh, connect the sound of chords with the, their arpeggios. And when I say connect, I mean we, uh, we want to be able to sing them, recognize them, of course, and, and, and sing them. So here's what we're going to do. We're gonna, just going to take a different seventh chords. We're going to go directly into seventh chords. We could, we could do triads too, but let's just uh, delve directly into those chords that we use every day um, in jazz and seventh chords. Uh, and let's do let's do major seventh for starters. So I'm playing here a G major seventh. Doesn't exactly matter that it's G unless you have perfect pitch. I don't, so I'm I'm off the hook. Uh, and what we are going to teach ourselves to do, you know, that's the training part. We're going to teach ourselves to um, to sing the notes of the chord. So uh, this is a chord where we have thirds stacked up. So starting from this root, we can add one, and we'll number all the, the numbers. So the root, we'll call it one. The third of the chord, we'll call it three. The fifth, five, got it. And the seventh will be seven. So we'll go one, three, five, seven, right? Those are all the notes of this chord. And if I were to arpeggiate the chord, one, three, five, seven, there they are, right? Um, and we can do it two ways. We can go one, three, five, seven, and we can go uh, one, three, five, seven, one, meaning the octave. You know, you can sing eight if you prefer, but you know, I still think of it as a, as a one. All right. So that would give us this: one, three, five, seven, one, seven, five, three, one. And if I arpeggiate those very notes, one. Five seven one seven five three one. I went down also. I, I guess I could have told you that first you're gonna just go up, but you know, you're gonna want you will want to go up and then down. Okay, now, um, the exercise would be to randomly grab chords and then sing the notes, right? And let's stick with the, the major sevenths for now. So I was doing it from here. So if I go say down here. Three, five, seven, one, seven, five, three, one. Now, if you have a limited vocal range like I do, you will find that some of the notes might be a bit low, right? Um, and if it's too low, you can sing up an octave. Now, I don't know here. One, that might get too high. One, three, five, seven. You know, then it gets ridiculously high, right? So I'm probably going to stick to the one. Three, five, seven. You know that I was singing earlier. So up and down would be one, three, five, seven, one, seven, five, three, one. Okay. And randomly, and I'm still, I'm gonna use the same grip, and I'm going to move it up and down the neck randomly. One, three, five, seven, one, seven, five, three, one. And if you're not sure, you can arpeggiate. Okay. Three, five, seven, one, seven, five, three, one. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's go here. One, three, five, seven, one, seven, five, three, one. Okay, so one, ba, we, da, we, da, we, da, da. Okay, so that was the same grip, up and down. Now let's do this grip. Now that's another grip that you all know, I'm sure, for major seven. So one. First thing uh, is to be able to nail the root, and it may seem 
a given, but it's not always a given, particularly when we will be looking at inversions. We're not going to do inversions today. We'll stick to root position chords, meaning the, the bass note happens to be the note that's giving its name to the, um, to the chord, the root, right? So here, if I play this chord, I'm going to have the one, three, five, seven, one, seven, five, three, one. Okay? One, that's my root. One, three, five, seven, one, seven, five, three, one. Got it? Um, so, if you struggle with that, what you want to do is practice your arpeggios. So play them just like you would. You know, practicing arpeggios is a big part of, of our uh, daily practice, or at least uh, at least it should be, right? And um, but you want to sing them. So if I play this, I'm going to sound the chord first, right? And then I'm going to play the arpeggio. But I'm going to make sure I sing the notes as I play them. And you don't have to sing the numbers necessarily because when it gets fast, maybe it's a little challenging to think of the numbers at the same time. Let's just go sound wise. So you can move in the half steps or randomly. Okay? And if I'm doing any any other um, fingering, the same exact thing. So again, going back to the chord with the root of the fifth string. Up a half step. Up another half step. Okay, so I'm I'm training my ear to to sing major seventh arpeggios and eventually I will uh, recognize them. Let's do that with um, with minor seven chords. One, three, five, seven, one, seven, five, three, one. Okay, here's the arpeggio. Okay, so same thing. Once you figure out your finger, the fingering, play the chord, play the arpeggio, and sing at the same time. Go up a half step. Up another half step. Up another half step. And vary your voicings. If I use this one, this one has the root on the fifth string. Up another half step. I think you get it. Let's do um, dominant chords. So, one, three, five, seven. That's my minor seventh, right? So, one, three, five, seven, one, seven, five, three, one. Okay, up a half step. So I could sing the numbers one. Here's the chord, right? So one, three, five, seven, one, seven, five, three, one. Okay? So do that with all the chords, the chord types you know, half diminished. So Okay, so that's the half diminished. You can do that with diminished chords. Basically, any seventh chord you're, you are familiar with already. Um, and then the next level, you could, you could actually play a note and then say, okay, I'm going to sing, let's say, a minor seventh chord. So one, three, five, seven, one, seven, five, three, one. And then check, play the chord and ba do we ba da are those the notes I sang? Yes, all right? Um, and do that randomly. Buzz one, three, five, seven, one, seven, five, three, one. Double check if you're not sure, and or you play the arpeggio at the same time, etc. You know, just vary the the order of um, of those little tasks. But it's um, it should be fun. You know, it should it's training. You know, so when we say training, we think oh, hard work, the gym, labor, intensive, etc. I, I still think of those things as you know, little games, and and um, 
your your ear training sessions should never be too long, you know, because you, you just get fried, you know, you get tired. But just one minute here, three minutes there, uh, as long as you do it on somewhat um, uh, on, on some kind of regular. Uh, schedule that's great so just uh, once or twice a day but a little bit every day that would be great you know and uh, and uh, and there you go again it's always about singing you know connecting what's going to be in your head um, and what your fingers are doing so when you work on your fingers sing what they're playing and when you improvise play what you're singing and so forth okay so um, it's the same same story you know <laughs> I keep I keep telling you guys telling you guys the same thing all right, so that's it for today, for this first uh, little um, uh, installation. Well, it's not an installation yet. This first little segment on ear training. Okay, bye.